Alright, what is up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. So it is Monday of my second week of OBGYN and I have a very chill but then exciting week coming up. So um, like I said, it's my second week of the clerkship. Last week was nights and it was a good experience. It was a little bit short uh, just because it was our first week of clerkships. Um, but over the weekend, I adjusted back to a normal like daytime schedule. Um, thankfully, it didn't take too long just because I only had like two night shifts last week. So I feel pretty back to normal. So this week is our subspecialty week. In a lot of our clerkships, we will have one week that is dedicated to a bunch of different subspecialties in um, that sort of primary specialty. And usually how it works is every single day you see a different specialty. Um, the point isn't for you to like master the specialty and like really be put to work. It's more just to get exposure to the field and see the different avenues look like, uh, you know, if you were to go into that specialty. So for this week, we pretty much see three different specialties. Um, we see maternal fetal medicine, REI, which is I think like reproductive endocrinology and infertility, and then uh, family planning. So the first two days are maternal fetal medicine. Um, so earlier today, I spent the day in like the ultrasound clinic over at the hospital. So Basically, every single patient was there just to get an ultrasound of the baby. Um, a lot of it was like the routine 20 week anatomy scans. So um, around 20 weeks gestation is when you do a very in-depth ultrasound to do a bunch of measurements and make sure um, everything is developing correctly. How it kind of worked was I went in, um, kind of just met up with the ultrasound techs. They would bring me into the patient room. I would watch them do the ultrasound um, and then we would go and kind of present to the attending who was a maternal fetal medicine doctor. And the way that I think of maternal fetal medicine is kind of like just more high risk uh, pregnancies. So if uh, moms have certain risk factors or, you know, they know that the baby has a certain condition, you um, will most likely be followed by a maternal fetal medicine doctor as opposed to just like a general obstetrician. Um, MFM fellowship is three years long, so they have a lot of specialized training and part of that is um, some in-depth ultrasound training. So um, they're sort of the experts at being able to analyze an ultrasound for anatomy and see if there are any abnormalities. Um, so like I said, we would go and present to the doctor, they would walk through the ultrasound with me, which was very helpful. Um, and then most of the time we would just go and tell the mom real quickly, everything looks good. We'll see you back in six or eight weeks or whatever it was. And that was kind of it for the day. Um, it was pretty repetitive. Uh, some of the times the ultrasounds took very long because if the baby was moving around a lot, uh, it was hard for the ultrasound tech to get a certain view and make a certain measurement. Tomorrow is also going to be with MFM. However, it is going to be in like the outpatient clinic setting. Um, so not really going over any ultrasounds, um, more just doing like routine checkups on the patients. So like if a Mom has gestational diabetes, following up with that, seeing like their glucose log, um, you know, if patients have preeclampsia, making sure their blood pressure is in check, that kind of stuff. So that's in the afternoon. In the morning, I'm gonna be at the hospital for the resident lectures from eight to 12. So that'll be nice to get some education too. <laughs> All right, so it is Wednesday afternoon and I just got home from REI clinic. So REI, which is reproductive endocrinology and infertility, um, is a subspecialty of OBGYN. Most subspecialties of OBGYN, it seems, uh, take about three years to do, which is a pretty long training path because just the base OBGYN residency is four years. So you're looking at seven years total of training post medical school, but um, all in all, it seems like a really cool specialty. So I went to one of the offices that actually is sort of their main office and has their lab. So the doctor was explaining it to me where most practices will have one, maybe two labs, and then a lot of just like outpatient offices um, where you mostly do like consultations. So 
the location that I got to go to, they do all of the lab work, obviously, and then also do their procedures. I got there around 1230, met with the doctor, um, just kind of hung out until the first patient got there. And uh, the first two patients of the day were actually procedures. They were frozen embryo transplants or transplantations, implant. I don't know. I don't know what the official term is, but basically went into the procedure room, met with the patient, sort of talked them through the process. Um, they filled out some paperwork um, and then we saw the fertilized frozen embryo under a microscope. Um, they sort of confirmed that that was the embryo that they wanted. And then, you know, the doctor used an ultrasound to locate the uterus, put a catheter through the cervix. Um, and then when the time was ready, one of the techs brought the embryo with like this really long syringe and then put it through the catheter and then we transferred the embryo into the uterus such a cool process you just saw like a little flash of like air fluid that went in through the ultrasound and, um that's how you know that the embryo went in afterwards you kind of like flush the syringe to make sure there was nothing left over um and that's about it it's a very cool process to see and then after that, I got sort of more of an official tour of the lab just because um, there was a bit of a lapse in the patients. It was crazy to see all the technology that they need for this process. Obviously, like seeing an embryo under a microscope, uh, doing things like injecting sperm into an egg. Obviously, you need very high tech equipment, um, but even down to like the ventilation system is something that I never really thought about. So it's part of the directions for us when we're going to this clinic is you can't wear any like perfume or cologne. And the doctor was explaining to me that like embryos are so sensitive that there's too much cologne or perfume or just fragrance in the air, then it can get attached to the lipids in the embryo and completely ruin everything. So with that being said, they need some very high tech uh, air filtration to just make sure it's under the perfect conditions. And uh, because of that, he was saying that the lab has a completely different filtration system from the rest of the building. So he took me down to the basement and showed me everything. Um, really crazy, cool stuff. It's uh, definitely like the most science fiction um, specialty that I've seen in medicine yet, just because, you know, you're harvesting eggs from ovaries, sometimes harvesting sperm from testes and then bring them together to make an embryo. Um, obviously there's a lot of like testing, like genetic testing that can be done and all that kind of stuff. Just from the very like limited experience that I had today, it seems like just such a cool field. Yeah, that's pretty much it for today. Um, not too bad of a day, it's like four o'clock. And then tomorrow I have a half day of clinic in the morning with family planning. And then I am headed to Philadelphia to go visit a friend and hang out in Philly. Jersey after an exciting weekend in Philadelphia. So as I mentioned earlier, I went to visit my friend who lives sort of in the outskirts of Philadelphia for a few reasons. One, just to see him. It's been about a year since I've seen him. Last year we did a trip with a bunch of friends to Disney and Universal for like their Halloween Horror Night stuff. Um, so that was really good. But yeah, I haven't seen him since then. Um, it just kind of worked out with this being more of a relaxed week in my clerkship. Um, you know, Fridays are usually just virtual lectures for us. And Thursday I had only the morning for clinics. So I had the whole afternoon off to get some studying in, pack and then drive all the way to Philly. Um, so I got there Thursday. We went to like this huge uh, pumpkin carving contest, which won as big as pumpkins I've ever seen. I don't know how they make pumpkins that big, um, but apparently it's a huge thing in that area. There were so many people there. It took so long just to like park because there were so many cars. Um, 
but it's some contest where like you pay a certain amount of money to like i guess buy the pumpkin and enter the contest and then it's like a carving contest that i think they get five hours um the day of to carve it and some of these pumpkins were insane um, I don't know how these people did it. So that was cool to see. Um, you got to vote on your favorite one. And then we just like went and watched football after that. Um, so just kind of laid low. And then Friday, we went into Philly. We were seeing Shane Gillis for a little stand up um, that night at eight o'clock. So everyone sort of had work to do in the morning. I had my lectures until like one o'clock and a few of my friends just work from home so they um, finish up their work day and then we went into the city and sort of the main reason was to go to this cheesesteak place that is apparently the best cheesesteak in Philly and I've had probably like three or four different uh, cheesesteaks in Philly and it's by far and away the best one um, but sort of the real measure was my friend and another one of his friends from home are from the area they grew up there their whole life and they were also like blown away it was um you know to them the best cheesesteak in philly so that was very worth it it took like an hour to get i would have waited way longer especially because the process was very easy you like go in and basically put your name on a waiting list and then they just say hey come back in 45 minutes an hour and your cheesesteak will be ready and i mean they just texted us so we Walked around a little, went to some German bar down the street, um, and basically just watched soccer uh, for the hour and then walked back. So it was really not that bad. It's not like we just had to stand there doing nothing for an hour. Um, we ate that in some park and then I think we just walked around for a few hours and then went to see Shane Gillis, um, which was hilarious. It was like pretty much like a sold out crowd, which is insane. Uh, I think it was like the biggest comedy show in that arena. I don't know who plays there, whether it's like the 76ers or the Flyers, but um, yeah, it was really funny. And Saturday we went to Hershey Park. Um, it was my first time ever going to Hershey Park. So that was nice. Um, it unfortunately was a lot more crowded than we thought it was gonna be. Uh, we went with my friends, like cousins and stuff and one of his cousins went a few weeks ago and said it was like completely dead. He only had to wait like 20 minutes for all the rides. So we're like, screw it, like, let's go. They were also having some of like Halloween stuff. So that was also another reason we decided to go, but it was so packed. Um, a lot of the rides were like two hour wait times. Eventually we looked it up a few days later and it was like one of the most crowded days they've had all year. So it's just kind of unfortunate. Um, that the wait times were really long, but it was still a good time. Um, very fun rides. Bought a bunch of chocolate afterwards, so um, yeah, all in all, it was a good time. It's kind of funny, me and my friend, I guess it's sort of a tradition every October to go to some like amusement park for their Halloween thing. And then uh, this morning just got up and drove home and I've been studying because that's definitely been neglected the past few days. Um, this upcoming week is another week of outpatient, but it's more of just like general obstetrics and gynecology. It's not like subspecialties or high risk or anything like that. So I think I'll be able to do a little bit more in terms of like having autonomy with seeing patients and stuff. So it's a nice transition into that. All right, well, that is going to do it for today's video. If you enjoyed, please be sure to leave a like below and subscribe if you want to see videos like this in the future. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.